Hello everybody, this is Tekka, and in this video, what I am going to be doing is going over the five must-have Google Chrome extensions for students. Now, the 2022-2021 school year is right around the corner, and because of current events, you're probably going to be using your computer more than you already did initially. So, there is no better time to get some little extensions, plugins, applications, whatever you want to call it, to go ahead and help you out with your workflow. Now this list is student specific, but if you do any type of writing on your computer, there is going to be something here for you. So let's go ahead and jump on into it. So coming in at number one and my personal favorite is my bib. So my bib is a free citation generator, and this is absolutely essential if you do any type of essay writing, anything that requires you to cite a source. So I have an example right here. This is a article on USA Today about a Supreme Court ruling and let's say I wanted to cite this a lot of the times we have to manually pull the author the website URL the dates published the publication and all that kind of stuff but with this all you need to do is go up and click on the my bib button right here when you click on that it will generate a source and you can simply just click and paste that right in and it also provides in-text citations. Now this is set to MLA because that is what I'm currently using for the class I'm taking and to change the style all you do is click on change style. Let's say you want to use APA formatting you just click on APA and then it would generate that source and you just click to copy this or the in-text citation and that's really about it. It makes it super quick, saves you a lot of time and overall it is a very, very convenient thing to have on Chrome. Coming in at number two is Mercury Reader. If you do any type of reading on the internet at all, this application is wonderful. And now we're back onto this article I was just looking at and you may notice that it is absolutely riddled with ads and unnecessary graphics, formatting, it's just not clean and it doesn't make doing some research very easy. So with this application, all you need to do is click on this little Mercury Reader button, and then it will generate just the information that you actually need to read the article. It takes out all the ads, and it kind of reformats it so it's as if you're reading the article in a newspaper. It keeps all the images that are actually relevant, and overall it is a very useful tool to use and it doesn't mess with anything or any other applications. You can see if I click this easy bib button again, it will work with it in this mode just fine. And now for number three is an extension called Read Aloud. Now we all have a lot of reading to do, and this is an example of something that I'm gonna have to go through and read. And I'm not really, I can read just fine, but I generally prefer lectures and listening to people give presentations or things like that. And taking online classes makes that rather difficult, but with this little application it does kind of help. It is called Read Aloud Text-to-Speech Voice Reader. And there are options, so before I give you an example, you have the speed, the uh, voice, so you can auto-select, or you could go through all these different voices if you find the default one annoying. You can change the pitch, the volume, text highlighting on or off. There's a couple different options within this application. But just so you can kind of see what it looks like, if I go ahead to this article on Canvas that one of my professors put up, and I just click this button, you can see it in action. Lesson 1.1 Attributes of a Good Journalist Please read Chapter 1 of your textbook, Writing and Reporting for the Media, before reviewing this lesson. A couple of years ago, the online version of The Guardian. Links to it. And you get the point. It has a feature where it kind of highlights and bolds out the words that it's actually reading. So it makes it really easy to read along with it while giving you that audio stimulation to help you retain the information a lot better. Now that we looked over a text to speech application, we're going to go ahead and flip that and take a look at number four, SpeechPad. And next up is called SpeechPad. Now this is a application that allows you simple speech to text functionality. This works on any website, whether if you are within a something like a Canvas portal or you're typing in Google Docs, it allows you to take your speech and put it into text. And what I'm gonna do is head over here and test this out. So this is a article on a WordPress portal that I'm writing for this video. And let's just add a new paragraph here and try out the speech pad. So you right click and you click on speech pad right here. And then you'll notice that this box will turn red. That means it is actively recording and I can even say things like P 
period, and then it will insert periods and other punctuations, question mark. And then you can see that it's fairly accurate and it does add punctuations, but you do have to say them out loud, period. And I hit enter to go ahead and stop it. And you can see that it did it pretty good. There might be one or two errors in there, but with any voice to text software, you're gonna have to go through and correct any mistakes that it made. And last but not least, number five, you saw it coming, and that is Grammarly. So Grammarly is kind of a big piece of software compared to some of the other ones we went over, so I'm just gonna give a quick overview. I opened up this Google Docs worksheet of an old assignment that I did to kind of give you an idea and show you some of the suggestions it gives. Before I do that, if you go up here, you have some options, so you can dis enable and disable Grammarly completely for specific websites a couple other options and language support for quite a few different languages. Now if I go in here, Grammarly overrides the default suggestions. So if I, instead of having to right click on something, all I need to do is hover over and here it's suggesting I remove a comma. You can see here suggested by Grammarly so you know that it's actually Grammarly suggesting this. So I could remove the comma. The thing that makes Grammarly better versus the default system suggestions is it is much better at grammar suggestions. Extension, give it a try and you will not regret it. And that about wraps that up. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this type of video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe for more like this and have a wonderful day.